For as long as I can remember, my family's been in the business of making sweet grass baskets. Weaving has been passed down from my great grandmother and then to my mom, and now I carry the tradition. I say tradition because basket weaving is becoming a lost art that few people are carrying on. I was taught at a really young age and took to weaving. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Now I sell my creations at the outdoor market. Hi, my name is Christopher Delaney. I'm a culinary instructor at the Art Institute of Charleston. And today we're talking a little bit about what we work on and what we look for in the development of a menu for the all or class. So in the first two weeks of class, they get the opportunity to be catapulted into the front of the house and the back of the house. And in that, we develop a menu that has diverse culinary techniques. So we're trying to produce fresh pasta, risotto. We're gonna do a braised entree, a seared entree, the production of a pan sauce, as well as a lot of the things that go into their exit practical. So, we use this opportunity as a, a chance to prepare them for what it'll take for them to exit the school. So we get the opportunity to have a lot of different technique and hopefully in an environment that encourages people to come and dine with us because that really helps push our curriculum and push the demands of the class because it allows them to have a real test in terms of what it is to serve people instead of going one at a time. So, are you ever going to ask me to marry you? <laughs> what? Where did you ever come up with such a thing? Oh, come on! How are you going to do it? Are you going to walk with me along the water? Or take me to a fancy dinner? Now, it wouldn't be a surprise if I told you what I was going to do. If I was going to do that sort of <laughs> thing. <What? laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't wait to be Mrs. David Nutterbaker. <laughs> Nutta maker. Uh, <laughs> Nutta ma Say it. Nutta maker. Nutta ma <laughs> Okay, repeat after me. Nutta. Nutta. Maker. Maker. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the way that sounds. No, I think this is what you're really looking for. Ooh, diamonds really are a girl's best friend. Ooh. Took you long enough. You know, I'm really tired of you bossing me around. You know, that's always been your problem. Too bad for you, I'm your boss. Uh, that's it. My name is Lynn Riding. I'm full-time fashion faculty at the Art Institute in Charleston. I work with um, a lot of the senior graduate students uh, who are producing their final runway show. So during the concept class, we cover 
what inspires them, which is always exciting to see. I decided to pick fashion because when I watch a lot of cartoons and anime, I'm just really moved by like the style of clothes that they wear. And you never really see people dress in that sort of style. And I wanted to pretty much um, be the cartoonist of fashion and bring the cartoonism style of fashion into the real world, I guess. So that's pretty much. <laughs> My collection is mainly about the African print, um, my version of African print, how it fits on the woman's body. Um, my look is really classic, like tailored skirts and pants and blouse and things like that. So mainly prints and African prints. Um, I just wanted to be in fashion because it was fun. It was something creative to do to channel my creativity and I like drawing so I thought that would be a good idea. I'm designing resort wear for children, um, girls four through six, well girls right now mainly. Um, I'm inspired by like water prints, water in its natural state, and Indian culture. I'm doing a lot of surface design with the water prints that I've taken pictures of and getting it print on fabric, so I think I'm going to incorporate a lot of that. Sea trope conservation efforts for the past 30 years seem to be working. Nest uh, numbers up and down the coast are increasing and that's great news, uh, but we can't rest yet because there are some looming conservation issues that sea turtles will be facing, and that includes sea level rise and habitat loss, that includes ocean pollution, which is greater and greater every year, and so really what we have to do is continue to save these sick and injured turtles that, that come up um, and into our hospital uh, to continue to try to educate the public on how to keep oceans free of pollution and debris that are harming not only sea turtles but a lot of other ocean life. Um, we, there's a lot of work to do even though we do see gains in uh, sea turtle conservation. Sea turtle releases are really the culmination of work from so many partners and volunteers. We really could not do it without the help of so many. Uh, we do have about 24 volunteers that help in our Sea Turtle Hospital, and that's in addition to the four full-time staff. We also uh, host in full-time interns every school semester, and they're a huge help. And, um, you know, when we go out to the beach to release these animals, we try to invite our donors and the folks that are involved in the rescues, any community partners that we have, um, it's just such a great celebration and a great time for the community that has shown so much support for sea turtles and the South Carolina Aquarium to, to help the, these animals back into their natural habitat.